to what degree do you combine the code to build your infrastructure with the code for your application? Should they be in separate repositories or should they be in the different directories of the same repo? Would you use the same pipeline to deploy them or is it two different? Like that's something I've struggled with is to what degree are the two coupled together versus keeping them somewhat separate? Well, more and more they're they're getting more coupled together. I mean, we're building software that is decoupled, like say more microservice type software where I may deploy the WebSockets part of the app. I may deploy the you know the, the API part of the app. I may deploy separately the front end, which is like maybe the React portion of the application. We're talking about like a web application here. If I keep those pieces decoupled, but inside of each of those, the front end to the back end, the infrastructure to the code, there is a coupling there so that I can control from a developer standpoint more granularly how my application behaves because maybe, like I said, I want to be able to tune it you know, I want to take advantage of these cloud features, but I don't want to wait for to get you know put in a ticket with the operations team, have them you know do their work. I, mean, I really know what I need. I mean, all of our developers are empowered to understand what they need from the the application. And then we, the operations team is obviously still watching, tuning, tracing, monitoring, and looking for performance issues, and they're contributing into the code repositories right alongside the developers. Like there's not there's no throwing over a wall anymore. I don't feel like I feel like we're really living in a world where you've got there's teams of specialized people, maybe SREs who are working on making sure that the performance is good. They're, they're dealing with kind of the real world interactions with your code, but the the developers themselves need to understand the infrastructure as well, so that they can take advantage of the cloud fully cloud native components. You know, you know, be able to leverage the infrastructure infrastructure as code to gain them. Uh, functionality in the application so that they don't have to write it. I mean, why do I want to reinvent wheels that may already exist? I think a little bit of what you said was probably the kinds of companies you're working with that are very forward thinking are like that. I don't think, I think they're still throwing <laughs> things over the wall, all depending on the organization. But I'm sure it exists. Are. And I'm going to start campaigning really hard against uh, some of these enterprise companies who just refuse to move toward this more modern processes. I like that we avoided the word DevOps. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, everybody. We all get a gold star. <laughs> but that, that is something I've thought about a lot is, is to what degree should they be coupled? And I think your example of if I'm provisioning an app and there's infrastructure that is solely dedicated to that, maybe it's some Lambda functions, maybe it's uh, an Elast cache, maybe it's some backend serverless database then that should probably live with the rest of the code because yeah. it's dedicated to just that one app. And that makes it easier to, to debug and test. But if it's infrastructure that has to support multiple applications, now that's maybe like a shared services repository or something like that. Is that a pattern that you've seen? Yeah. And um, for us, like, well, I'll just kind of give you how we're doing it right now for some of our Amazon projects. We have you know, um, multiple accounts in our organization and we'll have a single repository that basically does all the organizational structure, you know, the sub accounts mm. and all the shared consolidated billing. It's basically, it, de it deploys and provisions the account container that you may deploy your one app into. And then we have the project. If there's one single like application we're deploying for a specific customer into that account, that code, that Terraform states will live inside the repository for that specific application. I mean, the big benefit there is you get the, you get during like code review or all the source control commits are together, so I can I can quickly find when an issue happened. You know, it's all chronological. I've got all the commits you know tied together and keeping that atomicness to the commit. I mean, as long as you've got developers who are following again good practices. Like all the changes, you know, maybe they maybe they worked on a branch, but maybe they did a, the right thing and kind of squashed it down into a PR or a pull request and brought it into the application as part of the release. Again, we want to keep these changes small, nimble, quick, and, and you get more value out to the customers faster that way. And then you can trace back when there are issues a lot faster directly to the commit that caused the problem. And then you'll get the infrastructure piece and the application piece right in one spot. Okay. So the other thing that I think about is when you are doing the actual deployment, if it's from like a developer's laptop, but it seems like it's more and more going to be from a pipeline. Like right. where does that pipeline get permission to deploy into these accounts? How long does it have that permission for? How do you manage those credentials 
for deployment. I mean, before, if you were using like a bare metal server, you probably just gave it, uh, you know, some keys to use. <laughs> and you're like, well, it knows how to SSH into things and deploy stuff and we're good. But like that doesn't fly. No. And we're using, um, like, it depends on the cloud technology, but like when we're inside of AWS, we're using uh, the, the, SSM, I can't remember all these, Service Manager Parameter Store. Okay, there's so many okay. there's so many acronyms <laughs> these days. I can't remember what all of them are anymore, but the, the Parameter Store can securely store the secrets you need, for example, for the infrastructure pieces. So mm. uh, locally, um, I'll be using my AWS credentials, my own you know token to be able to access something, which I store securely in 1Password. <clears throat> so I have a one password that like puts it into my environment temporarily when I need it. Then I have, uh, uh, I can assume a role in another account depending on which project I'm working on. So I don't have to store like 10 keys, you know, one for each project. I have one me. I elevate my privileges for that specific project when I'm working on it and release. Now that release process may typically be uh, pushing code into a, a code repository that kicks off a code build or a Bitbucket like CI type job, based on the results of the success or failure there, it'll typically release an image into a container registry. Uh, now you can have it listen for that event, which is nice with all these clouds. You have the ability to listen for various events happening in the infrastructure and reacting to them with lambdas or or whatever you know case may be. Then it can do the release process. Nowhere along the line do I store any secrets in these containers, which is another nice thing is you can feed the secrets into the containers with environment variables. So, mm -hmm. I mean, leverage is 100%. Always environment variables. Parameter stores are perfectly compatible with the Terraform tasks. You can just tell it to go grab this key, that key, that key, that key out of the parameter store when you launch in this environment. And when you launch to production, it's this whole separate set of uh, keys which means you can now provide developers with dev environments that don't have the same passwords as production. Uh, now you mm -hmm. can kind of keep production, I mean, uh, kind of a as needed, right? You need a need to know basis. Uh, if you don't need to know the production database password, there's no reason for you to have it. So you kind of get plausible den deniability. <laughs> I think as a developer, that's a benefit. Uh, I'm going to run the same code, whether it's in my local machine or in production, but now I can't mess up production accidentally. Okay, how many times have you heard of someone having the production database password on their laptop, connecting, thinking they were working locally, migrating database tables, and just causing an utter mess? I, I, that that happens, and it's not not pretty. <laughs> yeah. It's happened to some of us who might be on this episode <laughs> right now. 